Hey what's up everyone and welcome back to my channel. Today's video will be part 2 of the Substance Designer series and what part 2 means is we go into Maya and we import the extracted exported textures from Substance Designer and implement them in the new AI standard shader and I will be using the Arnold M2A version 2.01 which has a few bug fixes and a lot of new features. Uh, which is very nice and I will be working with that version just in case you might have the question what version I'm using, what shaders, so I'm using 2.01 and I will be heading over to Maya right now. So I just have set up a, a, sphere lights, a, a few light spheres and I've imported the Hydrant Geo and what I did in the background was I created a, a brick wall with, with also in Substance Designer. Um, I quickly show you what that looks like. Very basic, it's not very detailed as well. I used a height map to drive displacement maps. You can see what we got. I think it's a 2K map, so I did not go too crazy on the export settings. Um, but you can see wh what it looks like, right? So then I have different light spheres, um, some which are more diffuse and one with more direct sunlight. As you can see, you get stronger light sources so that is what I am currently using for this. So the first thing what I like to do is I like to import the textures um, which I exported from Substance Designer if you don't know how. It is in the part 4 of the Substance Designer series um, where I export the textures. So um, what I do now is create an AI image node. I like to use that node. You can also use a file node. It doesn't really matter which one you use and then I exported them in the source images and I have base color, height, metallic and all the ones I have exported. So let, I will just import them quickly um, duplicating it four or five times, I think four, ah, five times and changing the file path quickly from this is the base then we have height. It always takes a bit to load because it's loading these thumbnails which is I think unnecessary. It takes a long time to load if you have pretty big textures so that's faster and I also have written a little script which helps you convert names from the base file texture node to the image node so then you don't have to rename them manually I might just share the script it's nothing really crazy so you select the nodes in the script editor I have this little script which I run now so running the renamer and then all my nodes got renamed AI image and then the base color so I don't need to do that manually right just saves a bit of time um, okay so these are the maps I like to use snapping actually it just it helps organize the graph a bit and let's create an AI standard shader this guy and I have the same thing for shading engines like renaming shading engines so let's call this AI hydrant for my shader uh, let's just call it training then and I want to select the shader and then I want to run the other script which is the SG one and then it automatically renames the shading engines as well okay so let's first let's connect them up and it's most it's pretty um, straightforward I guess base color goes to base color height should be displacement metallic goes to metallic normal goes to the normals and roughness goes to the either coating or to the specular roughness. So let's open these guys up and let's first connect the base color. So I press 2 or no actually which one? 4 actually. You press 4 and then you can click this guy to resort everything. Okay so let's connect the base color. I click here and I connect the base color I click on the red channel and connect that with the specular roughness. The metallic goes, it's not visible in the UI as on a default. So let's see if this actually works. If I edit the custom attributes and I add the metalness to this guy, and now we have it there as well, which is very convenient. So now I can just uh, connect the red to the metalness, and we got that too. Height is displacement and um, where's the normal up here so for the normal there is a new node or a node not a new node it's called uh, normal AI normal map which has now a strength parameter 
and I think it should just connect to the normal. I did not use this node before, so let's just see how this guy works. Input goes here, and the out is the normal. And then we have displacement, so we create a displacement shader. Displacement shader, and delete the shading engine, which comes always with the shader which is in most cases unnecessary, but it comes with it. So let's connect the red to the displacement. And the displacement goes to the displacement shader and the shading engine. Selecting the hydrant, assign this texture, unhide it. I'm not sure why I keyframed this. I guess this was a mistake. Break connections, saving. Okay, so I got the displacement connected, normal is connected, and all the other maps are connected. So for now, I just want to disable displacement. So no displacement. And let's just see what we get right now. I think it should be black. Yes, I forgot to enable a light. Let's try again. And this is what we get with the default connections. So this has, I did not do any changes, I just plugged in the textures and this is what I got. Um, you can see the normal map is working as expected, so I can actually view them if I um, go to the node editor again, I click this guy or press S, then I enable isolate, isolate selected, and I can view the normal map right here and you can see the nice detail. Uh, let's just zoom in a bit and you can see the normal map is working and then we have the new option in this shader to actually control the strength of that so let's just see if that as well works so if I disable the strength we get no normal map control so now we can actually go crazy on this value or not in the negative way but we can just slightly increase it as we want it to be. Let's just go on one on the default. So this is the exported value. Um, and then we can actually have a look how the displacement works. We might just use the displacement as a bump map because we don't want to subdivide. The geo is not set up to be subdivided. So let's just see if we go to um, debug shading and go to basic. And if we enable the scale to one, you see this is what we get and it's mostly bump stuff you can see if I disable auto bump this is what it's actually displacing so the bump map just gives a bit more detail so if I just go a really subtle amount on the displacement we get a bit more detail but it is breaking the geo because it's as I said not set up to be subdivided therefore you get like these broken fonts and everything like that so um, I might maybe dial it down just a bit more and we use it or we just get rid of that. So this is now a value of 0 0.025 for displacement and you you get you can see there is something going on now like adding a bit minor detail to everything. So obviously if you have a model which is able to be subdivided of course you should use sub, uh, the, um, displacement and also make sure it's subdivided as well. If you go to wireframe and then you obviously need to add more subdivisions um, but I won't be using displacement just now so what else is there to do what um, if you want to have more customization of the whole shader or the textures that you got then obviously you can um, export um, a mask ID for each different shader or like I mean texture so you have more control on the the gold or the brass and you have more control over the iron or paint but this would um, involve another step in substance so you would export a RGB mat or some ID mask for these certain colors and then you could actually control them separately in your shading tree um, but I want to show you if you let's say we want to control it a bit more and let's say we want to control the roughness so this is currently uh, what we have for the roughness map this guy and obviously you can now color correct it or remap this so I would create a simple remap HSV and connect the color right here and then the red channel the red channel goes to the roughness 
like this then you can obviously control it so you can now uh, make it more rough or um, like this it's going now on more on the rough side so it's more uh, flat I would say you can see what's going on so this is now super shiny very wet glossy looking which doesn't really look like metal um, but you can definitely make it more rough so it's more subtle and you see it's more a um, dull used up metal so this is how you would simply control those maps pretty basic stuff uh, what else can we do here um, it's, it's pretty simple to connect it actually be, and they will make it a bit more easy um, from the substance side so they will make rename those textures properly based on the attributes which are on the AI standard shader um, so this would actually be that depending on your light sources and um, obviously you will get a different look but I'm saving the scene now and this, this scene will be in the export folder which you can access if you go to um, the patron page of mine and get this uh, access to a source materials tier and then you have actually access to all the source materials like textures and model uh, what else and the render output so you can actually get access to that if you want to so let's just see if I missed something we connected this place but normal is connected well and obviously you can do some other fancy stuff like adding a thin film shader which you can do now natively in the new shader so if you want to add a thin film on top of everything you would go to thin film right here have a thickness of I don't know 500 or something and you can already see what's going on here um, and obviously you can use the roughness map to blend this guy in so a thickness of zero would mean it's off so let me just show you how I would connect this um, so I, I guess I would use the roughness map for my uh, mask generation so I would create a remap HSV uh, connect the color and then I would create a uh, what would I create now color correct let me just think a bit yeah let's just try that I did not try that before there's a node called AI color correct which has a mask input which is nice so I will be using the mask for the red goes in the mask and then the out color red goes into the thickness of the transmission of the thin film so I will be editing the custom attributes again and I will be looking for thin film thickness and I click away and we've got it right here and I will connect the red to the film thin film thickness and let's see if we can get this to work if I enable isolate okay let's first create a mask so I want to remap this to zero and one value so everything which now is um, grayish is I think the paint so we want to invert this we want to have the metal with this thin film thin film guy so we can invert this in a second it's a bit annoying but let's just view the red channel so that's a red channel okay so now all the metals have this value right so this would be my mask for the thin film okay okay let's see how this guy works so this is the red channel connected to the mask and then the input would be a float oh I hope I don't mess this up now but we'll see so let's just create an AI flat which is a basic color like a constant and this guy connects to the input like this and which this guy is let's say turn this off and now everything so far should be black if I don't mess up and let's see if we can actually multiply this value by a hundred maybe not start with white no not start with black start with white okay so something is going on now let's just check I okay we got a value of 50 for the thickness right now and we want to have definitely more than that I hope it makes sense so let's just reduce the thickness if I put this black back to black I multiply it so this doesn't help so I need to add this that makes sense right and the add should be now one which it is so let's go up here to 500 
So now we should have, there we go. So now we have black values and we have a value of 500 and this is driven by the mask, right? So now we should get only um, the thin film on the white areas. So let's see if this is true. And I think it is. So we have the, this metal here is fine. The paint is fine, but on the brass, we can see there there is something going on. Some of this thin film effect is happening right here. And it's pretty cool. And obviously you can control this with, with some noise patterns or whatever, or da just dial it down in general. Um, but this is, this is a pretty cool effect, especially if you have some oily, greasy parts, like, I don't know, some car pistons or whatever. And I think it's a pretty cool effect. Obviously, it's way too strong, and you should use this with care because it's not r really that apparent. But especially, like I think there are some fidget spinners who has this, who have this thin film effect on it, which looks also cool. So um, yeah, so this was part two of the Substance Designer series. So this is the final part where I've combined the textures from the first part from Substance Designer, exported them, brought them into Maya, connected them up to the AI standard shader and rendered this with a default skylight and this is how simple it is to set a pretty realistic looking texture just procedurally in Substance Designer. Thank you guys for tuning in. Leave me a thumbs up, leave some comments below if you like this stuff. If you don't like it, give me a thumbs down, maybe comment on why you don't like it. It will just help me to get uh, to improve my content and get better materials out there for you guys. Thanks for tuning in, see you in the next one.